Hello guys. Um. So yeah, today we're going to be, uh, sharing like a uh care guide and like the how do you keep a crested gecko, how do you get it and in general. Oh yeah, yep. This is caramel, my crested gecko, and um yep. Since now is the morning, it might be a bit tired, but like I think it's okay. Um, exams are coming up in Hong Kong, so like I I I'm, I'm making this video a bit early, to like um yep. We have exams tomorrow, and like, yeah, good luck to myself. And, um, yes, today we're just going to start talking about Crested Gecko and like how to care them. Uh, and Caramel will be in charge of talking about that. Yeah? Caramel? No? Oh, okay, yep. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, the table of contents, what are we going to talk about in this video? Introduction about them, some morphs, enclosure, their food needs and diet, some bonding activities you can do with them. And at last, a nice conclusion which sums everything up. Oh my god, that's big. Can't care at all. Oops, sorry guys. Caramel has a, like a really nice habit, which is like it never pees in its own enclosure, but like every time I handle it, it will like come out and pee. And then like, um, yeah. Yeah, caramel. Oh yep, this is um like I'm just gonna put it here. Okay, yep, so the first thing introduction. Crested geckos are a nocturnal animal. They're originally found in the New Caledonia, known as the Corolophus ciliatus in Latin. I'm not sure if I pronounced it right, so like maybe just Google it. I think it's important to remember like Latin. Since like sometimes you don't know like the others don't know what you're talking about in English and you don't know what they're talking about in their own language. So like um Latin is always pretty good. Wait, um where's Caramel? Nice. Okay. Um they have a pretty long lifespan of fifteen to twenty years and like at last the adults can grow to like fifteen to twenty five centimeters like caramel. He's not an adult yet, but like it's a pre adult, I think. Yep, so Caramel seeing himself a bit confused right now. Uh yeah, Caramel joined the our reptile family in June. 16th of 2022 we're unsure about its like uh, gender yet since uh it is not old enough to like identify as already like nine months or something it's a very smart intelligent uh reptile oops uh smart intelligent reptiles as like um and it's just like very smart like you know we didn't even train him and he knows or she knows how to like just uh like not pee in its own enclosure and come out so like that's why we need a lot of handling with it or else it can't go toilet. Um yeah, so difficulty of keeping them. Uh well being. Actually there's not much as like it's already one of the toughest animals, like it can survive in like pretty much the conditions, but like you just make sure like they won't like have so much health or like things like that. Issues not much. And if there's a health issue it should be already very like already very bad situation already. So normally just uh like just spray some water and like feed your worms and stuff like that, you'll be pretty good. Next, uh taming, it's a bit quick when it's young, but like when it's older it gets chubby like caravel and like pretty easy to be bonded. Regular handling is key and like um we'll talk about that later. Next diet is easy, really easy to get like their diets. Like you can just go into a pet shop and like just get their diets like super worms, crickets, or like the crested gecko diet, like the powder thing. So um the price uh it's not too expensive since like it's one of the beginner pets. Oh my god, crest caramel you pooped. Okay, yeah, but it's okay, yep. Expect it. You guys can see it, yep. Um Yep, okay. I'm just gonna help you. Oh, yep, that's good. Okay, yep. Camera after pooping. Yep. Uh, so, like, uh, general difficulty is in, like a very easy reptile to start off with. And I strongly recommend you to choose this, like, Crested Gecko when um, you're having your first reptile. And, um, yep. Temperature and humidity. Uh, the crested gecko will be needing like a 22 to 26.5 degrees Celsius at daytime or and then 18 to 22 degrees Celsius at, oh, at nighttime. Yep, I, I started coming. 
fifty to seventy percent of humidity level in the enclosure. Like unlike most reptiles, crested gecko actually feels stressed when there's like very hot and heat in the enclosure. So um yeah, make sure like you should do things such as like uh, be aware of the temperature, add in heat mat or like a very low wattage heat lamp such as twenty five W or like just the uh, night lamps. In the enclosure, spray the enclosure twice per day to increase humidity, and yet yeah, or once it will be pre cooked already. But we recommend twice. So how do you get a crested gecko? First up, like some reptile online shops or like professional breeders, uh, in the reptile store, and at last like adoption centers. Yep, I need to sneeze. Okay, yep, guys, I'm back, and I'm um, like these three are the best ways I think you can get a crystal gecko, and then open screen it. And also, we added the music like to make it more a bit more uh maybe interesting. I think like just Taylor Swift album, and the second thing will yeah we'll get copyright, but like I'm not doing it for money ties, but like just bring some better content content over like. So yeah, we just want more people to know about oh hi crystal gecko. Uh, oops, yep, nice, no jump. Okay, yep, the second thing we're going to talk about is a morph for the reptiles. What are morphs? Like, a lot of people, including me, doesn't know morphs before, like, encountering reptiles. So, like, what are actually morphs? They're, like, unique genes or DNA. Like, it's like, uh, you see caramel? It's the same species as, like, this crested gecko. This, oops, also this. But like they have different colors. Why is that? Like, um, it's because like they have different G DNA and genes, which is like morphs, which form their morphs. Uh, like they form unique patterns or colored different from like others in the same species. And yeah, uh, like basically you can ask someone or like Google it a bit if I'm not explaining too well. But I think um yes, yeah, like the basics, like the pattern and the color. So like which morph should you get at the beginner? I recommend you to buy some normal morphs and like caramel is a very good uh, example. He's just like a, I think like a clown morph because I'm not too familiar with this too. So like maybe a clown morph and like um, pretty like a the beginner morphs. Like you can see classy, pretty classic. Um, Like you, you, you see like the not classy orange striped one with a nice white tail on the back. So um yeah uh like uh by by I recommend you to find it like a healthy strong crested gecko by depending on like if it's active when you're encountering it in the like pet shop or something, and like uh, I recommend you to only buy better morphs if you like a breeder or like you have really good like economic status like you're very rich or like something like that if you're not a breeder but like if you're a breeder go buy some better morph so you can like make some better genes and then like get a better morph and sell it higher at a higher price which can you can get a huge profit from this so um yeah after the morph we're just going into the enclosure uh and like um enclosure i'll be like explaining everything you need in the enclosure and also the enclosure size so um for the juvenile uh crested gecko like you just need a twelve times twelve times eighteen cm enclosure container like this, and for an older juvenile and also a pre adult I think like a thirty twenty five twenty five thirty cm tank will be already decent and um yeah it's already pretty good and at last for an adult which caramel will be one soon I'll be moving him into fat ads in current enclosure soon and it will be like thirty times twenty five times fifty. And yeah, I think this is like the good requirement and like create decent space for crested geckos. Base substrate. Um, so uh, I'm going to recommend you to mix like these substrates into like a, a nice base substrate. First, sphagnum moss. It increases like the humidity, but like don't put too much because like uh, a lot of weird stuff can go in easily if you're a beginner. So I just put a bit spray more water and yeah. Uh, cypress mulch. Actually, I don't know this too much, but like it's some sort of barks, I think, or like wood. And then like uh, leaves, dried leaves for isopods if you have, or like just a bit decorative. And then some corn barks. 
uh, it's just pretty cool and then like at last some coconut fiber if you want some plants I think so yeah if you're getting them from the wild remember to sterilize them and like uh, make sure that they're not like parasite infected or something which would harm your plastic gecko okay so then for the water and food dish they usually like drink some water dropping around their enclosure Magnetical food dishes are uh, recommended and like same as the sticky ones like just actually put a, a Like any container like a small thing which I hope water will be already good Like don't buy to like 40 US dollar for like a small thing like this But like they actually don't care and like something like this would be already pretty decent Dodges and hides I think this is one of the most important um Oops, yep, um, like, I think dodges and hides are one of the most important, um, things you need in an enclosure. So, for crested geckos, you should have, like, maybe a corn bark, chunk of wood, and then, like, some sticks or branches if you can, and maybe some plants, and at least have one dodge in your enclosure. Um, so, yeah, live plants, I recommend you to add some in. As like crested gecko and other reptiles enjoy being living in a bioactive aquarium, so um, oops, yep, oops, 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 yep. So, live plants I recommend you: pulpus, Chinese evergreen, and the ferns are already like the three best plants I can name, by my understanding. And like, of course, any plants which you can put it inside can basically live, can basically live. And like, but like, just don't put like a cactus inside, like a seventy percent humidity thing, or like something which would like injure your reptile or something like that. Uh, like yeah, animal thing which can adopt to the enclosure, like the atmosphere in the enclosure can adopt to it. And like, but like, don't plan like some too overwhelming stuff. Like it might make your crested gecko just hide inside there and like just not come out. And then like other cool things to be added. Isopods and springtails, they're always nice and they can help cleaning the um the enclosure. Like what if car car caramel pooped, it will just eat it or something. And then like the fact for no UVB, a bit of UVB is always good, but like if you're a, you're re really, like I don't really have the spare money to do that, so like um it's like not mandatory so I didn't go for the UVB. But like um yeah, I think it's fine. Caramel's doing pretty nice, right? And then like uh, for plant lights, if you have plants, I recommend you to have one, I think. Because like it like just gives the plants a bit better. And um, at last some vines and branches. Like if you really don't get fake like living plants, I recommend you to get the vines and branches. So like just pretend it's a bit more of natural for the crested geckos. Uh, the fourth part, the diet of the crested gecko. Uh, basically it's very easily. So like how do you feed a crested gecko? I made this video. Uh, like how do you use the crested gecko diet? So um yeah guys just check it out and um I'm just gonna show a short time. So um first off you put some water in the um crested di gecko diet mixture and then like you just mix it up preparing this food now and then like um basically uh you, you can just take that like the mixture and feed it to oh turn it out look at you oh. And then like, oh, caramel is so small, and then like, it will just eat it, and like, I recommend hand feeding a lot, as usual, and increases like a lot of bonding, so like, I recommend you doing like the feeding outside of the cage, instead of just dumping some diet in, or like a cricket in. And then like, um, yeah, uh, that's actually, wait, where's, oh yep, the marine food. The crested gecko, uh, diet, they, the juveniles and adults are the same. They just like, I think like it can be split into two parts. First is the crested gecko diets, and the second part is just the live feeders. Um, crested gecko diet includes like their daily needs actually and like just pre value, but like you sometimes can be lazy because like you have to take things out and stir just for you, little boy. But like, um, yeah, I probably do it like most of the time, maybe 6 4. And then like when sometimes I'm like, tired, I'll just feed it like a super worm or croquettes, like. Just to also increase the diversity of its diet and like it's pretty easy to be fed and like but however it's like high in fats so like don't feed it too much or else the crested gecko will be very overweighted like 
I don't know. I overrate it. No. Okay, yep, you know I overrate it. Okay, yep. Um, so let's go into the fifth part. How to bond with a crested gecko. So yeah, basically what I'm doing is like bonding with a crested gecko. Like, yeah, do you think we're bonded, Caramel? Yeah. Okay, yeah, you see Caramel said yes. Like, um, uh, regular handing. I recommend you to do it like 15 minutes a day. And like in this video, I've already done it like 20 minutes. So like, it's already nice handling. Like, this is an example. Like when you're like doing homework or like staying at home watching TV, just hold your crested gecko like this. And it'll be like very happy and it's already called bonding. Like it's not 15 minutes. Uh, uh, uh. Like you don't go stare at it, like, but like you got something to do. But like your crested gecko gets handled and like gets some time out. And um, yeah, so like um, they love that. And like um, you can slowly, I recommend you like if you, you got a new crested gecko, just leave them for two weeks. And then like slowly don't touch their head since they might be pretty sad. Like I was scared, but like look at this now. Camera is trusting me, so like um, I can touch its head. Well, but before like just touch its body first before touching its head. Uh, so like these are some positions which you can hold your crystal gecko like this, and then like if it's trying to jump, just go on for another like the similar way, and you can hold it and then like this. Yeah, Caramel, go for it. And then like um yeah the second thing is the last like the second best method I recommend you hand feeding as much as possible AMAP. So um every time you feed your crested gecko just take them out like just do some handling and then like let them know when every time it comes out so like it gets food so like it will be having a good habit of like oh I'm coming out yay food yay happy stuff like that. And then like it increases happiness, also like it's trust on you. Unless like you just keep like feeding it, oh no, 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 oh no, no, no. Stuff like that. It will just like be sad and like angry, so it might bite you and raise hate. I know people like to do that, but like there are some big YouTubers like uh I won't say who but like some big YouTubers they do this too, like they feed it, oh I love it to be like a bit more wild and like a bit more aggressive. But like I'm not that kind of person, so like I'll just give it food and give it a nice pet. So yep, that's it. Also, like uh, if you're a beginner, it might try bite you because it either mistaken you as food, or like just um thought uh you're trying to attack him. So like every time an animal bites you, it's actually never like I'm using the quote Brian, Brian's quote, Brian buys sex, buys sex, girl, yeah, something like that. And like an animal never harms you when it's like it's always your your fault instead of the animal's fault. They're either trying to protect themselves or like you're not paying attention, or like they thought you're as food. So like it's never their fault, but like our fault as a handler. So at last for the conclusion of today's video, like uh, crested geckos are actually vulnerable in the wild, and like they're actually thought to be extinct until like a rediscovery in nineteen ninety four. Although seen in majority of majority of pet stores, it is like surprisingly marked as a vulnerable status in the wild, and like um, actually because of those ants, and also global change, climate change, and stuff like that, which affected their population. Oops, sorry guys, I'm really sorry. I'm having a bit of a nose right now, so, um. Although seen like in the most of the pet stores is like surprisingly marked as vulnerable and like their habitats getting destroyed in New Macadomia and also a lot of factors made them like vulnerable in the wild. So like you have to just want to let everyone just want to raise awareness on this. They're actually vulnerable and yep, yeah, so that's it. Uh, FAQs can crested gecko be living together? Um, I actually don't recommend unless you have a 90 or something in culture which is really large. So like, uh, only put females together, or like two females is the max I think. And then like, or one male and one two females is the max max if you have really large enclosure. And like for mating seasons, maybe if you want to breed them, just put a male and a female together, and yep, they'll be laying eggs in no time. Can crested gecko swim? Yeah, I think they can swim, but they don't like it. Because like they don't usually swim and I don't think like letting them swim is a nice option. Therefore, like I just did at a 
water bath for them and the bonding activities. Can Crested Gecko be recognizing their owners? Yes, they can. Like you see, Crested Gecko Caramel, he knows who I am. And like, I think it can like remember through the hearing and also like, oh, so chubby. Yep, uh, so uh, yeah, I think they can recognize their owners because like, you just bond with them. Every animal, unless I bet maybe insects, they can like remember someone. Oh my god, you're peeing again the third time. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um. So, uh, is it okay for my crush to get cold to mod it for not eat for a week? Um. Yes, it's okay. But like, don't make sure make sure like to raise the temperature in your tank as it, it might be like a bit too in the cold, or like your crush to get cold isn't like having the good hot. Uh, like, uh, like it's not digesting well. So like, be aware of that and consult some reptile expert or myself. Uh, if you, like I'm not a reptile expert, but like I think I can help you at, at least I think I help because I have some experience so like um uh, Just console me feel free do that and like and last like um so like uh, yeah Just try and feed it a bit more But like if it doesn't work just like console someone and like maybe add raise the temperature a bit in the tank and Give them a high something like that and then at last, is it a must to miss them twice every day? Um, I think at least once will be good. Once. Especially in winter, don't do it twice. It will just make them refreezing and cold. So yeah, guys. Thank you very much for sticking till the end and watching this video. Have a great, great day. And um, yep, thank you for watching so much. And yep, Caramel. Wait, wait a second. Yep, Caramel. Bye. Have a good day, guys. Bye.